The Farms.com Canola Report is brought to you by the Clearfield Production System for Canola and BASF Canada. Keith Gobber with the Canola Council here. I'm an agronomist from Central Alberta. One of the real key features that we're going to remember from 2016 is the fact that we had a really high incident of sclerotinia. So uh, with a lot of moisture coming in mid-season, sort of right about the time where growers were trying to decide, do I need to spray for sclerotinia or do I not need to spray for sclerotinia? Right at about that point, we started to get adequate moisture to excessive moisture and it continued pretty repetitively so this year I've talked to growers that probably are wondering if maybe spraying for sclerotinia twice might have been an option that they'd consider. That's not an option we generally talk about in Alberta uh, as management for this disease so management for sclerotinia is typically reserved to a single uh, fungicide application that's well timed with a good water volume and this year we've seen that that, that uh, perhaps didn't give us some of the control that we wanted so we'll see continued focus on that disease for the next couple of years I'm sure as a result and unfortunately that's pretty typical for the last 15 years I've, I've probably said the same focus um, managing sclerotinia is for uh, Managing sclerotinia is, is generally viewed as an insurance application. If you've got a crop that's got good thick canopy, where moisture and humidity will be retained in that canopy, it's probably worth spraying. Uh, and that's the advice you would have got this year. Turned out to be even truer than, than we realized. So we'll see continued focus on sclerotinia, sclerotinia products uh, in into the next coming years, because that's about how long our memory is. Not a lot of issues with black leg or club root. We, club root had continued to spread, but probably about the same as we would predict uh, for a year where there's enough moisture to bring that disease along. So it continues to remain a focus. We probably see the industry making some strides on uh, black leg genetic resistance labeling. So we may actually have a, a system in place where we'll talk about rotating genetics to control that disease and it works really well if you can manage and identify the genes that are controlling resistance uh, for that disease in your field. Yeah, so it, it's a little hard to predict pest uh, populations in advance so uh, and, and the provincial entomologists generally try to, to uh, even provide forecast maps so there's a little bit of ability for things like grasshoppers, uh, birth armyworms follow a bit of a cycle so no we don't expect to see for example birthers come back uh, immediately Ligus bugs, I'm, I'm not aware that anyone can really predict their uh, their uh, influx all that well, so it's just going to be one of those ones that we continue to focus on. Uh, I said insects were really not that much of a problem, but at the same time we struggled with cutworms uh, through into the first week of June, so they seem to linger on quite a bit this year. But that's a patchy and sort of a scattered problem, and, and rare to affect the same grower repeatedly, so, so cutworms are going to be a, a continued interest. And flea beetles, if you were to ask me about flea beetles, unfortunately, Unfortunately, when I talk about that insect, I say it's a it's an insect pest that could bother any field any year. So our ability to predict some of those insect pests is really low. So it's continued scouting and, and taking care of whatever comes up uh, to bother your crop. The Farms.com Canola Report has been brought to you by the Clearfield Production System for Canola and BASF Canada. Visit www.agsolutions.ca.